is what evil lurks in the hearts of men. <laughs> the shadow knows. Blue Coal presents The Shadow, the mystery man who strikes terror in the very hearts of shopsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today, The Death Triangle. Ladies and gentlemen, The Shadow will be with you in just a moment. In the meantime, I'd like to remind you of a well-known fact. Coal colored blue means better heat at less cost. For when you buy blue coal, you're getting the cream of all Pennsylvania anthracite. The harmless blue coloring with which blue coal is trademarked is your guarantee of clean, even, safe, dependable heat all winter long. Such heat ensures the health of your entire household. So when you order coal, specify blue coal. Ask for it by name. Phone your order to your nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow. By order of the authority of Devil's Island, you, Pierre Martin, are hereby sentenced to 100 days in confinement solitaire and a hundred lashes in the presence of the assembled prisoners as a warning to all who would attempt to escape. Let the punishment begin. I will find the devil who betrayed me. One. I will learn his name. Two. I will kill him. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program of organ music to bring you a special news flash from our affiliated press service. New York, December 12th, 1937. The shadow has been found. Dr. James Evans, world-famous child surgeon, told reporters this afternoon that a wounded man who claimed to be the shadow forced his way into Dr. Evans' private clinic and at the point of a gun forced him to remove a bullet. The wounded man then revealed that he was none other than that mysterious character who has waged a one-man war against crime, the Shadow. Before Dr. Evans could report the case to the police, however, the Shadow mysteriously disappeared. The famous surgeon believes the Shadow has little chance of surviving his wounds. Our organ recital now continues. Hello? Dr. Evans speaking. <laughs> Dr. Evans, the man you claim to have operated upon was a fake. The real shadow has not been wounded. The shadow? You are the shadow? Yes, Dr. Evans. You don't seem surprised. I'm not. I've been hoping you'd get in touch with me. That statement I issued was false. False? Come now, Dr. Evans. A man of your high standing in the medical world does not issue false statements without very grave reasons. There was a very grave reason. I need your help. An old acquaintance of mine, Raymond Dubril, the financier, has received a death threat. Have him notify the police. No, he refuses to do that. Then let him take the consequences. Unless... Dr. Evans... Have you also received a death threat? Yes, I have. Before I made this call, I investigated your past, Dr. Evans. My past is a matter of public knowledge. You were once a political prisoner on Devil's Island. You escaped 20 years ago with three other men. Raymond Dubril, the banker, and Pierre Martin, the concert pianist. Yes, but our convictions were reversed by a high court a year after we escaped. I know it was proved that you three were innocent. But what about the fourth man who escaped with you? 
A murderer. Jacques Corbeil. He was caught and sent back to Devil's Island. After the escape, one of you betrayed him to the police. I don't believe that. Why else should he mark you for death? Then you know Kobe escaped from Devil's Island a second time six months ago? Yes, Dr. Evans. Then you're interested. You'll help? Yes, I will help. But only because your life is in danger, Doctor. The world can ill afford to lose the skill and genius that has saved the lives of countless children. You overestimate my importance, Shadow. But will you help? Yes. When and where does Kobe's warning say he will strike first? At Dubriel's Long Island Estate tonight. How do you know this warning came from Covey? Dubriel received a miniature music box in the shape of a coffin in the mail this morning. A musical coffin? Yes. And when the lid of the coffin is raised, the music box plays a tune. A tune Dubriel, Martin, Covey, and myself whistled as a danger signal when we were planning our escape from Devil's Island. Where is Dubriel, Dr. Evans? At his Long Island estate. Martin is staying with him and I am driving out there to spend the night. I had hoped you'd come and help. I will help you, Dr. Evans. Tell Dubriel and Martin that the shadow will be there tonight. Oh, Miss Lane. Is Mr. Cranston at home? Uh, no, Miss Lane, he's not. You know where I can reach him? Well, he may be at his club. No, I've tried there. Uh, his office? Yes, everywhere. Nobody's seen him all day. Oh, is there anything I can do? Uh, be sure and stay here in case he comes home. I'll call you on the phone later. Uh, yes, Miss. I've got to find him. I've got to. I've just got to. I've got to find the boss. Maybe Dr. Evans knows more than he told the newspapers. His office said he might be at home. Number 33. Yes, this is it. Oh, Lamont, I knew they'd shoot you someday. Yes, miss? Is Dr. Evans here? I must see him. I beg your pardon, miss, but are you another reporter? Yes, and I must see Dr. Evans. It's important. It's a matter of life or death. I'm sorry, miss, but Dr. Evans has nothing to say to the press. He's not at home. But I must see him. I must find him. I'm sorry. That car. That's Dr. Evans' car. Yes, miss. Where's he going? I'm not at liberty to say, miss. Never mind. I'll find out myself. Taxi. Taxi. Okay, miss. Where to? Follow that big black limousine, the one with the green cross on the license plate. That's well, a doctor's car, miss. I may have to break a lot of traffic laws if it goes through red lights. Never mind, I'll pay the fine. Don't lose sight of that car for a minute. Okay, lady, but this is going to be one fast ride. Driver, yep. driver, slow down. That car's turning in at that estate. What do you want me to do? Go through the gates after? No, it? no, stop here. Okay. Here's five dollars. Hey, thanks, man. I wonder if this is just a wild goose chase. Lamont couldn't be way out here, not if he's wounded and dying. That car, it sounded like... Oh, but it couldn't be. It is. It's... It's Lamont. Lamont! Margo? Margo, what, what in heaven's name are you doing here? Oh, Lamont, then it wasn't true. You weren't shot. Dr. Evans didn't operate on you. Oh, no, so you heard that news flash, too. The papers are full of it. I tried to find you out the office, at home, at your club, everywhere. I'm sorry, Margo. I should have known you'd worry, but I've had a very busy afternoon. Uh, how did you get here? I followed Dr. Evans' car. He just drove through those gates. What's happening, Lamont? Are you trying to find out why he said he operated on the shadow? Is, is someone impersonating you? No, uh, Dr. Evans did that, knowing I'd get in touch with him. He needs my help in a very special manner. But why? Is someone after him, threatening him? Yes, also the owner of this estate, the banker Dubriel and Martin, the concert pianist. And you're going to help them? I'm interested in helping Evans. He's a great doctor and a great humanitarian. His life is in danger. Lamont, now that I'm here, is there anything I can do? Yes, Margo, wait in my car. Keep your eye on the house. If you see a light go on and off twice in one of the windows, drive to the nearest payphone and notify the state police to come to the Debril estate. I'll watch for the signal. Fine. I suppose there's no use my asking you to be careful. No, Margot, but uh, I'll try. I'll try to avoid really putting Dr. Evans to the trouble of removing a bullet. 
from the shadow. Gabriel, stop pounding on the table and cursing Covey. Oh, that's all very well for you to say, Evans. Your turn hasn't come, but it will. If we three sitting here, you or me or Martin, don't get Covey when he comes here tonight, you will be the next on his list. You or Martin. Oh, don't concern yourself about my fate, Gabriel. I am not afraid of Covey. Oh, you'll change your mind if he manages to kill me, Martin. <laughs> I wonder what it's like to die. What do you think, Dubril? Or do you ever think of anything but your fat stomach and your money? I, you... Gentlemen, this is no time to argue. I have something more important to tell you. What is it, Evans? I hear you had quite an experience today. Operated on this man who calls himself the Shadow. Yes. That's what I want to talk to you about. Ah, there's a man, Dubril. The Shadow. He might save you from Covey. Ah, uh, what could he do? I've had the best private detectives in the country trying to find some trace of Covey ever since he escaped from Devil's Island again six months ago. By the way, Dubril, I've always wondered who tipped off the police when Covey was hiding after he helped us escape 20 years ago. Covey was a murderer. We were innocent men. And also, who betrayed me, Dubril, the time I tried to escape alone the first time? Matt time, Dubril, now listen to me. A moment ago, we were talking about the shadow. Well, he isn't dying. I didn't operate on him. I announced that, hoping the real Shadow would get in touch with me. And did he? Yes. And he's coming here tonight to help us. I've always been curious to see this Shadow. You won't see him. No man has ever seen him, but he'll be here. Oh, Evans, for a man of intelligence, you're talking like a fool. The age of ghosts and mystic presences is... You're wrong, Gabriel, you're wrong. Because I am a doctor, I can readily accept the fact that the Shadow is a master of the powers of mental suggestion, of mass hypnosis. Recent experiments have proven conclusively that... That's rubbish. <laughs> Allow me to convince him, Dr. Evans. Uh, what, what was that? Who spoke then? The shadow, Dubril. You do not accept the theory of my power of invisibility. But perhaps you will accept the fact. For I am here. Sit down, Dubril. You look rather pale. If I am to help you... You will all sit down. Sit at that table there. I understand there is little time to lose. I must know the whole story. The truth. If I am to help you. Do as the shadow says. Sit there, Matt. And you, there, Dubril. Well, why don't you talk back, Dubril? Be quiet, Martin. Dr. Evans, I will help you if I can. But there is one gap in the chain of events leading up to this moment. I'll tell you anything I know, Shadow. Then tell me this. When and under what circumstance did Covey first threaten your lives? It was the last day we spent in the open boat in which we escaped from Devil's Island 20 years ago. Storms had blown us off our course. Our food was gone. Our water was exhausted. Covey, the only one who knew how to navigate, was... Well, he was slowly dying from hunger and thirst. I can still remember his cry. Water. Water. Oh, be quiet, Jose. There is no water. The cask is empty. You're lying, Dubril. All of you. You've been drinking my share. Give me that bucket. Give me a drink of that water. Don't let him have it, Don't let him have it. Salt water will kill it. Oh, what does it matter, Dr. Evans? Seventeen days in this open boat. Nights of storm and days of blazing heat. Water. Water. I'm dying, I tell you. Dying. You're not giving me my share. You're stealing my water. Where will you be if I die? I'm the only one that knows navigation. Be patient, Kobe. It may rain tonight. Oh, we might as well be back on Devil's Island. At least there was bread and water there. Bread. Bread. A crust. Just a crust of bread and water. Water. There's no bread, Kobe. The last crust went three days ago. You're cheating me. Killing me. You only brought me along to steer the boat. Now you're starving me to death. You don't want me to live. But I will live. I'll get you for this. I'll live to kill every one of you for this. You, Dubril. You, Martin. You, Evans. Oh, shut him up, Evans. You're a doctor. You know what to do. Look. Martin, Dubril, look. Oh, what does it matter if we have no guns? I know, but don't you see? The gulls never go far from land or a ship. Oh, you, you're right, Evan. Look, look to the west. It's land. Land at last. All right. There, to the southwest. You can see the sun of the mountains. We're safe. Free at last. Come on, come on. Sit up, sit up. 
Look, look. We've sighted land. There'll be food and water plenty for everybody. You tried to kill me. Starve me to death. But I'm going to live. I'm going to live until the last one of you is dead. 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 Yes, we threatened all three of us. And so you see, that's how it all began. And now Covey is free and out to get us, Shadow. But what makes you so sure it is Covey? Well, it couldn't be anyone else. It's Covey, all right. He said you breathe that thing on the table. That oblong box? Yes, Shadow. Notice its shape. It's a miniature coffin, beautifully carved. Covey was a woodcarver. He was always handy with a knife. But still, it does not follow that he was the one. Except for one thing, Shadow. When the lid of the coffin is raised, it's a music box. And that tune it's playing was a warning signal we used while planning our escape from Devil's Island. Remember, only the four of us knew it. You Dubriel, Covey, Evans, and myself. Oh, stop it, Evans. Stop that curse of thing. Stop it, I tell you. I can't stand it. <laughs> so you have a conscience, eh, Dubriel? That danger refrain recalls the past, doesn't it? Stop talking about it. It looks as though Covey meant business, doesn't it? Don't sit there conniving over me. You forget your turn, maybe next, maybe tonight even. I am not forgetting anything, Dubriel. You better study yourself, Dubriel. I'll get you a drink. Oh, never mind. Here's the decanter. I'll pour it myself. Oh, that tune! Where is it coming from? I smashed the coffin. Good heavens, Dubriel! It's the decanter in your hands. Oh, someone, someone changed the decanter. Covey, he did it. He's here. He's been in his house tonight. You believe where he goes? To my room. I don't trust anybody. I'll be safe there behind locked doors, alone. And if Covey comes, I'll be ready for wait, him. Wait, wait. Let him go, Dr. Evans. But he shouldn't be left alone. Covey may carry out his threat. Are you sure it is, Covey? What do you mean? It must be. It couldn't be anyone else. The coffin, the decanters are his warning. I know. But you said the four of you knew the signal. Are you sure it isn't one of you? Well, of course not. I thought you said the shadow was here to help us. I am. But I am content to let events lead themselves to a logical conclusion. You mean you won't use your power to save us from him? I shall use my power at the moment it is required, Dr. Evans. Right now, for instance. Look on the table. Huh? There is a note where the decanter was standing. Good heavens. Covey has been here. Listen to this matter. You are the first. And you will die tonight, Raymond Dubriel. Ladies and gentlemen, the shadow will return in a moment. There are thousands of families living around snowbound Buffalo today who are as snug as a bug in a rug... Thanks to Blue Coal, you have read how the whole city of Buffalo has been literally snowed in. In that entire area, business practically came to a standstill for several days. But those families who laid in their supply of Blue Coal kept comfortable. The icy, biting winter blowing outdoors made no difference to them. These storms are reported to be coming eastward, so take a tip and get ready. Put in a supply of Blue Coal tomorrow. It is the most economical fuel that you can use. Furnaces, parlor stoves, and cooking ranges in New England were designed to use anthracite. And blue coal is America's finest anthracite. Blue coal is mined by the Glen Alden Coal Company and is especially prepared for home use. It is available in all domestic sizes, egg, stove, chestnut, and pea. Every carload of blue coal is laboratory tested for purity and sizing before shipment from the mine. Blue coal burns steadily and evenly sending a full supply of heat to the living quarters of your home, even in the most severe weather. Get set for winter tomorrow by ordering Blue Coal. You will find the name of your nearest Blue Coal dealer in the Where to Buy It section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal. You breel. You breel. Wake up. I have come for you. <laughs> so you've come, Covey. Oh, you poor deluded fool. Do you think I'd let you kill me in my sleep? I've been awake, waiting here in the dark for you to come. <laughs> a little light helps. <laughs> so you've grown a beard since I saw you last, Covey. And your hair is gray. That gun in your hand won't save you, Dubriel. If I die, I will take you with me. Listen, Covey. I didn't steal your food in the open boat. I swear it. No? You also betrayed me to the police. You told them where to find me. 
And I am not the only one you betrayed, am I, Dubriel? You betrayed Martin the time he tried to escape alone, didn't you, Dubriel? Yes, yes, but what do you care, Corre? He wouldn't take me with him. But I did not betray you. Have you paid Martin for those hundred lashes and those hundred days of bread and water he got because you betrayed him? Oh, he doesn't know. He will never know it was I. Dubriel, you remember how we passed the long days in that open boat... Throwing knives. Don't raise that knife, Corvée. We got so good, we seldom missed. I'll shoot if you move. But Martin was the best. You may shoot me, Dubriel, but my knife won't miss. Oh, wait. Wait a minute, Corvée. I will make a deal with you. Listen, Corvée. You are out to get Evans and Martin, too. If you throw that knife, I'll shoot you and you will never get them. Oh, you would help me kill Evans. I know he's here in the house. Yes, 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 sir. I hate Evans and Martin, too. I will help you get them. <laughs> so... You would betray Dr. Evans to save yourself, to Dubriel. The shadow. Corvée, don't be afraid. He's only a man. By some trick, he can make himself invisible, but he's flesh and blood. Quick, lock the door. We'll deal with him first. He won't get out. Now, now, shadow. What can you do to stop us? Speak up. I dare you to speak. Listen where his voice comes from, Dubriel. Then shoot quickly. No, no, no. The shot would bring Evans and Martin. Throw your knife, Corvée. Make him speak. I won't miss... Speak up, Shadow. We will find you anyway. You can't get out. I am here in the corner. In the far corner. Throw your knife, Corvée. I heard it. <laughs> oh, you missed. But he was there. No. Only my voice was there. Ventriloquism. He's there in front of you, Dubriel. Shoot, shoot. Yes, yes, I will shoot now. Yes, I will shoot. But not the shadow. He came here to help us catch you, Kobe. And he has your knife. It's gone. Now, Kobe, you are helpless. And now I'll deal with you. Oh, you treacherous snake. You fool. You think I carry only one knife? This one is for you. Oh, you... But uh, I take you with me, Kobe! Dubriel! Dubriel! Dubriel, hold the door! Dubriel! 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 Dubriel is dead, Dr. Evans. Dead? Kobe's kept his word. Where is he? Look there, on the floor by the window. Kobe? That coin? Dubriel tried to save his life by promising to help that man kill you. Dubriel? Dubriel offered, offered to help Kobe kill me? Look closely, Dr. Evans. Remove the gray wig and the false beard. Wig? Beard? It's Martin! Yes. Martin, disguised as Kobe. He's still alive, breathing. Get away from me, Evans. Don't touch me. I'll hit you. I hate you both. Why did you do this, Pierre? Why? I hated you, Briel, because he betrayed me on Devil's Island. I hated you, Evans, because you have got the things that I always wanted. Success, fame, glory. It was I sent the musical coffin. The warning note. I knew you'd think it was Kobe. I've got you, Briel, but Kobe will get you, Evans. He's after you. He will get you. He will kill you. He will... Mata, Mata! Stop breathing. Dead. Yes, Dr. Evans. He is dead. You are quite safe now. You forget Kobe. No, Dr. Evans. I knew, even when I phoned you today, that it was not Kobe who sent the musical coffin. What? I knew it was not Kobe. It had to be Martin or Dubriel. Why didn't you stop them? Martin and Dubriel were both criminals plotting to kill you. If I had stopped them, your life would have been in danger as long as they lived, hating you always for having attained the things that life denied them. But you forget, Shadow. Kobe may find me. Succeed where Martin fails. Never. I learned the whole history of all of you before I saw you. Yes? Everything, Dr. Evans. Your escape from Devil's Island after Dubriel's betrayal of Martin that resulted in the hundred lashes and his resolve for vengeance. And from the authorities at Devil's Island, I learned the truth about Kobe's last escape. Yes, I see now. I see now why he hated us. But what about Kobe? You are safe now, Dr. Evans. Safe from Kobe. The chain of logic is complete. Three months ago, a bleached skeleton was found on a deserted beach at Trinidad. It has just been identified as the body of Kobe. <laughs> The 
before we tell you of the Shadow's next exciting adventure, here's John Barclay, Blue Coal's famous heating expert. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Barclay. Good evening, friends. While you're doing your Christmas shopping, why not get a gift for your own home? Something will not only make it a cheerier, happier place in which to live, but also make it easier to run. To my mind, the perfect gift for any home is a blue coal heat regulator. This marvelous thermostat provides the last word in comfort. For example, there's no running up and down stairs to open and close dampers. The blue coal thermostat does that tiresome job automatically. Keeps your home at just the temperature you want from morning till night. It can be attached to any kind of heating equipment. Steam, hot air, hot water, even a parlor heater. And it'll give you more uniform heat, more economical heat than you can get with the most expensive oil burner. In fact, this blue coal heat regulator will completely modernize your present heating equipment. And yet it costs only $18.95 plus a small installation charge. You'll be amazed at the amount of fuel it saves you. So this Christmas, give your family the gift of a lifetime, a blue coal heat regulator. Your nearest blue coal dealer will be glad to give you complete information regarding it. Phone him tomorrow. Thank you, Ken Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Barclay. And friends, take Mr. Barclay's good advice. Make this Christmas a memorable one by having a blue coal heat regulator installed in your home. You'll save its small cost time and time again in fuel consumption. And you'll make your home a happier, healthier place in which to live. So don't wait. Phone your nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow. The story you have just heard is copyrighted by the Shadow Magazine. The characters in this story are entirely fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. And at this time, may we remind you to mail your Christmas presents and cards early to secure delivery before December 24th. There will be no post office service on December 25th. <laughs> the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. Oh, Lamont, I knew they'd shoot you someday. Yes, miss? Is Dr. Evans here? I must see him. I beg your pardon, miss, but are you another reporter? Yes, and I must see Dr. Evans. It's important. It's a matter of life or death. I'm sorry, miss, but Dr. Evans has nothing to say to the press. He's not at home. But I must see him. I must find him. I'm sorry. That car. That's Dr. Evans' car. Yes, miss. Where's he going? I'm not at liberty to say, miss. Never mind. I'll find out myself. Taxi. Taxi. Okay, miss. Where to? Follow that big black limousine, the one with the green cross on the license plate. That's well, a doctor's car, miss. I may have to break a lot of traffic laws if it goes through red lights. Never mind, I'll pay the fines. Don't lose sight of that car for a minute. Okay, lady. But this is going to be one fast ride. Driver! Yeah. Driver, slow down. That car's turning in at that estate. What do you want me to do? Go through the gates after? No, no. Stop here. Okay. Here's five dollars. Hey, thanks, man. I wonder if this is just a wild goose chase. Lamont couldn't be way out here, not if he's wounded, dying. That car, it sounded like... Oh, but it couldn't be. It is. It's... It's Lamont. Lamont! Margo? Margo, what, what in heaven's name are you doing here? Oh, Lamont, then it wasn't true. You weren't shot. Dr. Evans didn't operate on you. Oh, no, so you heard that news flash, too. The papers are full of it. I tried to find you out the office, at home, at your club, everywhere. I'm sorry, Margo. I should have known you'd worry, but I've had a very busy afternoon. Uh, how did you get here? I followed Dr. Evans' car. He just drove through those gates. What's happening, Lamont? Are you trying to find out why he said he operated on the shadow? Is, is someone impersonating you? No, uh... <laughs> Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? <laughs> the shadow knows. Blue Coal presents The Shadow, the mystery man who strikes terror in the very hearts of shopsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. 
Today, the Death Triangle. Ladies and gentlemen, the shadow will be with you in just a moment. In the meantime, I'd like to remind you of a well-known fact. Coal colored blue means better heat at less cost. For when you buy blue coal, you're getting the cream of all Pennsylvania anthracite. The harmless blue coloring with which blue coal is trademarked is your guarantee of clean, even, safe, dependable heat all winter long. Such heat ensures the health of your entire household. So when you order coal, specify blue coal. Ask for it by name. Phone your order to your nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow. On this day, December 22nd, 1913, by order of the authority of Devil's Island, you, Pierre Martin are hereby sentenced to 100 days in confinement solitaire and 100 lashes in the presence of the assembled prisoners as a warning to all who would attempt to escape. Let the punishment begin. I will find the devil who betrayed me. One. I will learn his name. Two. I will kill him. Three. I will find him. I will kill him. Four. I will kill him. Five, six, seven, Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program of organ music to bring you a special news flash from our affiliated press service. New York, December 12, 1937. The shadow has been found. Dr. James Evans, world-famous child surgeon, told reporters this afternoon that a wounded man who claimed to be the shadow forced his way into Dr. Evans' private clinic and at the point of a gun forced him to remove a bullet. The wounded man then revealed that he was none other than that mysterious character who has waged a one-man war against crime, the shadow. Before Dr. Evans could report the case to the police, however, the shadow mysteriously disappeared. The famous surgeon believes the shadow has little chance of surviving his wounds. Our organ recital now continues. Dr. Evans speaking. (laughs) Dr. Evans, the man you claim to have operated upon was a fake. The real shadow has not been wounded. The shadow? You are the shadow? Yes, Dr. Evans. You don't seem surprised. I'm not. I've been hoping you'd get in touch with me. That statement I issued was false. False? Come now, Dr. Evans. A man of your high standing in the medical world does not issue false statements without very grave reasons. There was a very grave reason. I need your help. An old acquaintance of mine, Raymond Dubril, the financier, has received a death threat. Have him notify the police. No, he refuses to do that. Then let him take the consequences. Unless... Dr. Evans... Have you also received a death threat? Yes, I have. Before I made this call, I investigated your past, Dr. Evans. My past is a matter of public knowledge. You were once a political prisoner on Devil's Island. You escaped 20 years ago with three other men. Raymond Dubril, the banker, and Pierre Martin, the concert pianist. Yes, but our convictions were reversed by a high court a year after we escaped. I know it was proved that you three were innocent. But what about the fourth man who escaped with you? A murderer. Jacques Cobay. He was caught and sent back to Devil's Island. After the escape, one of you betrayed him to the police. I don't believe that. Why else should he mark you for death? Then you know Cobay escaped from Devil's Island a second time six months ago? Yes, Dr. Evans. Then you're interested. You'll help? Yes, I will help. 
but only because your life is in danger, Doctor. The world can ill afford to lose the skill and genius that has saved the lives of countless children. You overestimate my importance, Shadow. But will you help? Yes. When and where does Covey's warning say he will strike first? At Dubriel's Long Island Estate tonight. How do you know this warning came from Covey? Dubriel received a miniature music box in the shape of a coffin in the mail this morning. A musical coffin? Yes. And when the lid of the coffin is raised, the music box plays a tune. A tune Dubriel, Martin, Covey, and myself whistled as a danger signal when we were planning our escape from Devil's Island. Where is Dubriel, Dr. Evans? At his Long Island estate. Martin is staying with him, and I am driving out there to spend the night. I had hoped you'd come and help. I will help you, Dr. Evans. Tell Dubriel and Martin that the shadow will be there tonight. Miss Lane. Is Mr. Cranston at home? Uh, no, Miss Lane, he's not. You know where I can reach him? Well, he may be at his club. No, I've tried there. Uh, his office? Yes, everywhere. Nobody's seen him all day. Oh, is there anything I can do? Uh, be sure and stay here in case he comes home. I'll call you on the phone later. Uh, yes, miss. I've got to find him. I've got to. I've just got to. I've got to find the boss. Maybe Dr. Evans knows more than he told the newspapers. His office said he might be at home. Number 33. Yes, this is it. 